Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast, Pop Culture Edition. Today, we are going to be talking some Bama Rush documentary that just came out on HBO Max, now titled Max, and just some other random pop culture things with the return of the pop culture expert of the L7C Podcast, Miss Chelsea Heppert. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing good. Never. <laughs> So, Chelsea, you and I just watched Bama Rush together. And for people who don't know what this is, what was the Bama Rush documentary? It was based on sorority recruitment in Alabama, specifically at the University of Alabama. Um, Bama Rush got super popular back in 2021. Um, because of TikTok and people like were obsessed with recruitment and what these girls would do to get into a sorority. Um, and so people started taking notice and HBO filmed a documentary about it. Yeah. And before this documentary came out, I know you've gone on TikTok here and there. Did you ever hear about Bama Rush before the documentary? Not so much Bama Rush. Like, I knew of other schools' recruitments um, and things just because I was an authority. Mm-hmm. So it was, a, like, a good thing to know what other people were doing so that way you could see how to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, but not, not specifically Bama. So this documentary, um, it was following four aspiring sorority pledges Shelby, she came from a high school in uh, Illinois. Isabel came from a high school in Florida. Holiday was a Bama freshman from Orange Beach. And, and Michaela was another freshman from Alabama. These were the four lives we were seeing it through. And then I'll say a fifth main character, the director, Rachel Fleet, whose story was heavily in this uh, documentary as well. So. Chelsea, just, like, what did you learn from, like, watching this? What things shocked you? What things were like, oh, I knew this how it was, but what things just popped out to you? So, like, when the preview for it came out, like, I immediately texted you. I think it was at 6 in the morning when I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is going to be wild. Mm -hmm. Like, so excited. And I genuinely wanted to know, like, because the the whole premise was... This is Greek life. This is sorority recruitment at Bama. This is institutionalized racism, like the machine X, Y, and Z. And this is going to end Greek life as we know it, specifically at Bama. Mm -hmm. Um, And it like the promo for it was fantastic. Like it definitely caught your attention. Um, And then you got there and like, Yes, some aspects were about what we what I just said, but then it was just it left things to be desired. Like mm-hmm. I I don't know if like I've become I don't know. Like it was just I expected more out of HBO and I expected more out of what we were promised. Not necessarily promised, but like shown. Do you think you expected more because you are you were in Greek life as an undergrad and like you know some of like some of these things weren't a shocker to you? Like if you weren't in Greek life and saw this stuff, do you think it would have been a more shock factor than you being there and you're just like, mm, there's I was expecting more. I think so. I definitely think so. Like the way that they were explaining rounds, um, and how you go through recruitment like i could see as being a shock to a lot of people but once you're in it it's just kind of normal i mean it's just a social job interview essentially at the end of the day Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i could see people who weren't in greek life being shocked by it but even what they showed wasn't shocking because they didn't actually show anything Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they just followed these girls around and they had really cool cut scenes with 
iPhones and scrolling through TikTok, but they didn't actually go into any of the drama. Like to me, it would have been more interesting if they talked about the cost of being in a sorority, like not just like conforming to those standards, but the actual money and everything else. Like I would love to hear about that and a few other things too. So I did some research on some of those costs that they were talking about in the Bama rush thing. And it's crazy. Like we went to a smaller school, significantly smaller. So you're looking at three, $400 ish a semester in dues here, PNMs, which potential new members for people who aren't in Greek life, they're expected to drop between $4,170 to $4,978 in just new member fees per semester. And like that includes a chapter meal plan, local chapter fees, along with one time fees for pledging and initiation. And like just hearing that, obviously, we went to, we went to a small school. We didn't have chapter meal plans. I would have loved that. <laughs> just like we did not have that. So that would have been better than the <laughs> campus meals. <laughs> <laughs> and then the average cost for new members. Living in house fees per semester because you're paying to live in that house is around like seven to nine thousand, and that's per the Birmingham News. Living out of house fees uh, range from three thousand to four thousand. So if you're living in those big, those sorority houses at Alabama, like those are like mansions, you're paying like seven to nine. But if you're living out, you're potentially paying like three to four. When you heard those numbers going through recruitment yourself years ago what was your thoughts on that it was shocking for the dues um and like the eight thousand dollars total just because based on knowing what my money went for Mm -hmm. like my dues you could sign up for payment plans you could do it in bulk you could do whatever you wanted um But it essentially just covered the dues. Like, if we wanted t-shirts, there was the added fee. Um, Any, like, trips or excursions, like, that was out of pocket. Um, Everything else, like, was out of pocket on top of that. So, it kind of puts it in the perspective a little bit. Um, And on top of all those dues and fees... And just doing things. You're also paying for your meal plan if you live on campus and you're paying for your housing. So if your meal plan goes comes from your sorority, mm-hmm. like I think that would be kind of better, honestly. Um, because like if you look at the cost, I'm honestly sure it's cheaper, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. And a lot of those bigger schools in those sorority houses, they do have those private chefs, they have the nice kitchens and it's probably healthier and so much better tasting. Um, so like from that perspective, I would be down. I would pay that. I think too, with just like hearing those prices and such going up to like, cause especially if you're a freshman, like you're a freshman yeah. right out of high school, you probably don't have a campus job yet. You probably don't have your job back home. Cause it's your first year of college. You're just getting acclimated. And depending on your financial situation, most of the time they're going to be like, hey, mom, dad, I want to join this organization on campus. And for these ladies, and I know Alabama, that is old money. Their money is completely different than like uh, us. But to tell your parents like, yeah, I'm going to need maybe nine thousand dollars to join this organization in my first year. Mm-hmm. I, I I do not know how you have that conversation down in the South, but it's normal because you see hundreds of girls rushing. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. And it was interesting too, because in the documentary, we followed two girls who were sophomores and they're very much not from that old money. Like one of the girls worked three different jobs. Um, Yes. So it was interesting to see the different different paths that people would take to just join a sorority. Yeah, that was, I believe, Holiday who worked yep. 
the different jobs and all of that and Michaela because they were the two sophomores who we followed who both didn't get in while mm-hmm. Shelby and Isabella got into their first They're- choices. Yep. So Chelsea, I also want to ask you about the ranking system that they portrayed. How sororities are ranked based on fraternity influences. And this is at Alabama. This isn't a disclaimer. This isn't every school. It could be other schools, but I'm not saying this for every school. Just this is how it wasn't Alabama in the documentary. Like they're based off of the fraternity's influence, which I found interesting because where we went to school, I do I well to me, maybe because it was I was a freshman, I didn't think fraternities had any influence on the sororities that were ranked or whatever that had to do with recruitment and bidding and all of that. What were your thoughts on that when they said it's like the fraternities who are influencing the sororities' ranks? Mm-hmm. So I joined Greek Life as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. So I waited a year. Um, I think there's some truth in fraternities okay. having a say, but it's I don't think where we went, it was the whole truth. I think it was just that stereotypical, like, we think these guys are hotter. Like, they're not the weird mm-hmm. ones, or they're not whatever. Like, they don't wear cargo shorts, so they're infinitely hotter um, standard. Um, so I think, to a certain degree, it did. But honestly, I think our sororities had more say over who was a higher ranking um just in the way that each organization presented themselves um what each organization was known for doing on campus whether it be events or their academics or whether or not they won the lip sync competition like i think all of those had a factor you're laughing because it's true (laughs) yeah that's a that's a podcast for another day that was some (laughs) That was some true, that was the election was stolen before Trump was saying the election was stolen. That one, the lip sync was stolen and rightfully so. That's a whole funny podcast for the future because that was, I'm so that was mad a day. Years I, later. I bet you and a whole bunch of other people are still mad about it in passing when you bring it up. But I just found that so weird because I guess for being in a fraternity, I just never thought that we had any influence at our school of oh this sorority is the top sorority because we said so or they have the most attractive girls and all of that and i felt like maybe because it was a smaller school and that there was more to being a great organization than like the looks and all of that yeah i think on a superficial level it definitely plays a factor but there's more to Greek life and organizations in general than what people look like and how they dress. And then the other thing they had here, they had the potential new members. They had their own thing. I'm sure everyone else has their own thing. They had the five B's. So P and M's weren't allowed to talk about unless they were talked about at first with active members, boys, booze, Bible bucks and Biden. Um, Bucks means money or wealth, and Biden just meant just politics. Bible means you shouldn't ask about religion. That's what church the sisters go to. Second is just straight up booze, and the first one was just boys. What were your thoughts when you heard those five Bs? Did they sound familiar? Or like, how did you feel about those being the five Bs of not talking about it? They sounded familiar. Like, from on a recruitment side, there are certain topics that you could not talk about like alcohol partying Mm -hmm. um boys like those were the general ones um and depending on like the members and organization there would be like other conversations that you wouldn't necessarily want to talk about but like not that you weren't allowed um so just staying away from like the heavier topics, especially round one, because that's it's a very superficial getting to know you. It's like speed dating. It's a, hey, how are you? Oh, mm-hmm. cool. You're bubbly. We think your personality might mesh. What are the things that you're into? Cool. Like that fits with us type of a thing. Mm-hmm. It's not like spilling your life's trauma and your beliefs. Like it's literally, it's a speed date. Like you don't want to get into that. 
You know what I mean? I do. That makes makes perfect perfect sense on that. And then one of the other things is for people who do not know how competitive uh, sorority recruitment is in Rush and Bama being like the height of how competitive this stuff really is. They they really they really showed it in a way because other TikTokers, if you're just scrolling through and you see a Bama Rush girl who's going through it, you treat them like they're your favorite character in the story that you want them to get in that story if they don't get their first choice, the second choice. And when you saw the competitive showed on Bama Rush, what did that make you feel like? Yeah, like people who don't know sorority recruitment is no joke, especially at that scale. Yeah, I mean, I was spot on because you you want to go in your top pick. Like mm-hmm. if you mesh well with the sorority, like from the get go, it's going to get stuck in your brain and you're going to be like, this is the sisterhood that I want. These are the girls that I want to emulate. I think it would be a great experience, whatever the case may be. So you go into it and you're trying your hardest and it's, it's super competitive because you have to have the right look. You have to have the right answers. You have to be funny, but not obscene. You have to be approachable, but not a pushover. You have to like have all of these traits that they're looking for. Um, You have to be quirky so that way you can stand out. Um, but not too quirky where you're just annoying. Um, all of these things. And it is it is a lot of pressure, especially if you feel like you're kind of putting yourself into a box to be liked. Um, but then on the other side, like, it's your organization. Like, you absolutely have the right mm-hmm. to bring in like-minded people because at the end of the day like you are founded on certain beliefs and certain um traditions and you want to honor that and to keep your organization as great as possible um so you do have to be judgmental and keep an eye out for red flags and our school at one point had a rule that every every person who went through recruitment had to be accepted into Mm. a house or a chapter Mm -hmm. um and that was a rule that a lot of people struggled with and i still struggle with it because i don't think that that is necessarily okay to enforce um because it happened where we did have to accept a person who shouldn't have been allowed to go through recruitment for a variety of reasons so it, it goes both ways. Like you have to, it's a job interview at the end of the day. Like that's the easiest thing to compare it to. Obviously when you went through sorority recruitment, when you did and a lot of these, especially like TikTok wasn't a thing and all of that. How big of an influence now is social media, TikTok, Instagram in sorority recruitment? Do you think, it helps it more or hurts it more? Would you have wanted it back then? Like, how do you feel like social media, especially TikTok, has influenced sorority recruitment? Um, I think social media has a big impact because the first thing that people are going to do when they go through recruitment is take pictures and send it to to their friends. Like, we use mm-hmm. Snapchat um, and Instagram, and you want to document what you're doing, and all of your friends are going to ask you, like, Oh, like you went through recruitment, blah, blah, blah. Like, how's it going? Um, And as soon as you get to bid day, the pictures are going to start popping up. So you want to have the cutest bid day t-shirt. You want to have the cutest theme because it is themed. Um, You want to be able to stand out and you want to be able to show how great the organization is and those pictures just solidify it and they'll be used for years and years to come to make sure that you're getting the new members that you want. So it's incredibly important. It's all about branding. That is is true. That is true on that. So then when you, when you're watching this Bama rush and you're seeing these four girls from their very different perspectives you see something called the machine and then that's where you go into the director talking about her story 
of why she is who she is and all of that. And it's you start hearing the rumors of like, oh, HBO or Netflix is going to try and uh, record Bama Rush, things like that. We can't have this happen, yada, yada. You see a thing of one girl get kicked out of recruitment because they think the back of her shirt is a wire for HBO and all that. Even though it wasn't, she gets kicked out. What were your thoughts on the machine, quote unquote, in Alabama, basically being their Illuminati, running things from the shadows? And do you think you, the school you went to, did you think we had a machine or anything like that? Ooh. The machine in Bama's perspective, like, it would make a really good story, mm-hmm. like, a really good one. Um, and I wish they would have went more into it like the history and what they found and i think they started to um up until the director decided it was her time to shine Mm -hmm. um so i think it would have been interesting to hear about especially with like homecoming elections like everything um and it would have been cool if they went into sweethearts between Mm -hmm. sororities and fraternities and whether or not the machine controlled that um i i just think it would be interesting and then in terms of where we went i mean you always heard jokes about like if someone went homecoming king or queen it would always be like well well that makes sense like no one else was gonna win because it was so and so same thing with sweethearts to an extent and then with our lip sync competition it was very much a lot of people felt it was rigged at times so do i think there was a machine no but do i think that there were certain people in positions that they shouldn't have been in and played favorites absolutely when you see in this one michaela she was the one you saw where we see a new position that i didn't know existed until watching bama rush and i've been involved with greek life for over a decade now is the what the rush consultant like you can hire someone to prep you for rush chelsea i did not know that was a real position and there was multiple girls on who we were following who had rush consultants i think that's just a strictly southern thing do you or a okay. big school i don't know like going into rush I talked to friends who I knew that were in sororities and Mm -hmm. like got their advice on things, but there was no like company that I could call out and be like, Hey, show me how to dress, show me how to talk, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they also had insane requirements for Mm -hmm. joining like recruitment in general like you had to have a resume you had to have a video yep things like that and i want to say that we did have a requirement um like you had to sign a form or something but i can't remember exactly what it was but it was nowhere to the extent of a detailed resume with a picture um or a video explaining why you should be picked to join an organization so i think it's just that culture and how big it is Mm -hmm. um but no the consultants i want to know how much they get paid (laughs) ditto ditto uh you also see michaela in the fact where the consultant takes her to the uh the shopping and she's like do you have a dress for each day how often is that that if you're going through the bidding process rushing you have to have a different outfit for each day. Is How true is that? I think that's true. Um, to quote Lizzie McGuire um, and the movie, like, Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. <laughs> Just because, like, everything is so close together and each night is kind of themed. Um, so they were kind of spot on with that one. So, like, The first night is kind of relaxed, but it is your first impression. So you want to look cute and approachable. Um, And then it just kind of increases from there. And like your last round of recruitment, at least how it was for us, it was um, where you would kind of join the chapter in like a small ceremony. 
<laughs> so of course you're going to dress up more for that ceremony and you would attend and go through and based on each round like you would start out with your with all of them get a feel and then narrow it down from there so by the end you would either be going to one organization ceremony or two depending on your circumstance and when you see Michaela like they're buying these outfits and being down there that is that that doesn't look cheap no no and especially like and we've talked about this before but i think with tiktok and social media like you're dressing for an event a little bit more so you're gonna splurge and feel like you have to outshine everyone else but like when we were going through it you just had to look cute and not be as unique because everyone was shopping at forever 21 or charlotte (laughs) Russe or wherever Mm -hmm. like we were not going to nordstrom or lily pulitzer until end of college Mm -hmm. um if you started out wearing lily pulitzer then you were rich rich right and then you see also with the stuff of michaela and uh Haley, the two people who do who did drop out they had some falling outs with some friends and like i think themselves too but how big does that play a role if you're rushing with someone and then one person who you thought was going to go, they drop or you get in an argument with someone and we saw a friendship be lost during the rush period. What were your thoughts when you saw that? I think it's sad just because I don't like it when people lose friends. Um, but I think it happens a lot. Like if you join an organization and your friend joins another one, Like, you guys just kind of drift apart. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you can still be friendly, obviously, but different groups, like, different social circles sometimes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, I agree. But I think their situation, it was just no one was in the right. People were drinking and things were said. Which is never a good thing and then you had I want to make sure i say her right name right isabella who she joined the thing of her choice but you also heard the stories about her being she talked about how she was sexually assaulted not during this but before the documentary you also hear from from holiday about like she was casual she was like oh yeah i've been roofie before like two or three times and they even talked about a thing when they got roofy dirty, this thing. Like, what were your thoughts just seeing that and how casual Holiday was about that? And how she's like, oh, I'm not going to press charges. I'm not going to go deal with the court. I did with that last time. And I'm like, what were your thoughts on that? It's sad because I think I would have had the same response if I was still in college. Mm-hmm. Um, Just because the court systems when you're that young like you may not understand how it works um and like you might think it's casual or not that kind of a big deal when it happens because if you're going out everyone could get roofied but like as an adult like no you should have actually stood up for yourself and pressed those charges and made sure that it didn't happen again type of a thing but it's it's hard in those situations because it's never it it's not your fault that it happened, but you're the one who has to make sure that it's done and right and followed through with, and that's beyond frustrating. But in ter- for Isabel, like I can't even imagine what she went through, and then still being brave enough to go to a large school and joining an organization, mm-hmm. um, especially when the culture around Greek life is sex and partying and like for her it was very much about like the actual sisterhood and being part of something bigger and giving back to the community so and i think that those points specifically are things that people forget about agreed agreed and then you just see with i also was able to find the article from last year with the new york times writing about like oh 
the Bama Rush thing. There might be a documentary about it and the machine saying we're going to stop it. And the director say, like, director doing something she hasn't done in years and putting on a wig again. Like, it got pretty and there was like threats. And I felt like at that point, I was like, I don't think you should have been threatening the director about this documentary. I feel like that was a little much. Yeah, like, I don't know, threatening someone's a bit overzealous, and by a bit, I mean it's a lot. Like, it's not worth the effort. Mm-hmm. Um, I, And most of the things that were coming from that were just bots. Yes. Like, if you notice, like, all the usernames and things like that. So, it's I, it would be interesting to see, and I don't think that there's a real way to find out ever because of technology and all those good things but whether or not it was like specific people who hated greek life or people Mm. within that greek life system putting that out good point that's a good point you really just see how different it is at alabama because you see some of the main characters of this documentary just going to a fraternity party and you know a small school you're like all right that's someone's like Go inside someone's apartment, maybe hang out outside, yada yada. Fraternity party in Alabama, they walk to, there's a whole DJ booth, and there's hundred like, what were your thoughts seeing how their fraternity parties and stuff are over there? It's wild. Like, even going from a school as small as ours and then visiting one of my good friends at Miami University, like it mm-hmm. was a completely different world. Mm-hmm. Completely. And that was just three hours away from us like you would spend two hours getting ready and not just like the fun get drunk get ready but like you would get ready Mm -hmm. um you would have to have really cute outfits and go on the actual themes and when you got there it was wild like they would have some of those setups maybe not to that scale because technology but they were so much more intense than what I was used to. And even going out, it was ridiculous. Um, Just because you had to look a certain way and you would go into these houses and things. And then like at our school, it was very much like, yeah, if there was a theme, dress on theme. But I don't know. I feel like it was a lot more casual. And you have these pe- these people in sorority life, even the four people we followed, especially Shelby, who they showed her post and everyone's like on TikTok and she was getting millions of views. I'm like, oh, she's a main character. Yada, yada. I want her to make it. You have some of these people who now enter sororities and all that stuff trying to get their careers as influencers because if you get enough followings that could be your career now so now you have the that extra incentive to get in those big sororities Mm -hmm. that to me is wild mainly because like once you get that influencer status people are going to want to see more and more and more and like there's things that you can't show like Mm -hmm. and they did talk about standards a little bit and the rules like the code of conduct and all that stuff but like you can't have pictures of you with a drink in your hand you have to edit it out you can't have videos of you drinking or having what could look like a drink um you can't put yourself in those compromising situations where you might be tempted to and post things like that like it was not allowed so i don't know how they would manage that like you know what I mean? Like, it would just be insane. And you can't share what goes on in chapter or ceremonies and things. Mm-hmm. Like, there's most of it would be private. Like, you couldn't do that. Yeah. And Shelby entered in as a freshman and she dropped mm-hmm. because she didn't want the rumors affecting her of getting in. She was dead set on getting into uh, Greek life. And she currently, like right now, as a freshman, so 18, 19, just finished her first year of college. She has over 7,500 followers. That's crazy. Like, just as a freshman, and her stuff's going to continue to grow, especially as more people watch this documentary. And this is on Instagram, so I don't know how many people she has on 
TikTok or other platforms. So that's just nuts. That's a lot. That's a lot to worry about. Especially as a night a 19 year old. No. That would be awful. Chelsea, well, anything and it'll, and go ahead. I was gonna say like even showing her going through like getting ready for recruitment was intense. Mm-hmm. Intense. Like I I don't know if I could do all that. Yeah, that TikTok of hers that went super viral about like, oh, here's my bag, all the stuff ready, and she was just pulling mm-hmm. everything out and it had millions and millions of views. So and now after people watching this, when it gets to the fall again. Or whenever they do their formal recruitment, they're going to be like, all right, time to look at Bama Rush. What's going on? It's going to be a phenomenon again. It is. It's going to be so interesting to see. Uh, Yeah. I don't think it'll be as big of a deal because nothing actually was exposed, like, in Mm -hmm. quotation. And mainly because I feel like the director just took it in a completely different direction. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I agree. She did take him in a whole different direction because you get to a point where you're following these people's stories and then you like get to bid day and you're just like, yeah. okay, but what about like recapping how the first couple of days went during rush? Mm-hmm. They're like, no, it's just straight to straight to bid day. So that was a little strange, but I don't know. Could they do a Bama rush too and follow like then like a senior year come back and check on these four who I mean two didn't join see what they're doing or the two who did to make it through do they get positions does Shelby become president her junior year or something like that I feel like running for office in one of those big sororities must be hell honestly I don't see them doing a follow-up just based on all of the criticism of the actual documentary because of the director like, I don't think people would be interested, and I think the moment would have passed. Like, unless there's a huge scandal that comes out of Bama, like hazing, racism, whatever the case may be, I don't think people are going to want to watch it again. Yeah, because they talked about how Rachel used her own experiences uh, to talk about the girls' searches for friendship, sisterhood, and acceptance that they're university and then these people just two of them just started college one was one two years a freshman going to sophomore so yeah anything anything else about this documentary that was just like whoa i can't believe this is happening at bama like this is different or like this connected with me in a certain way or anything else no i think it was really tame i wish it was more gritty and thought-provoking but nothing nothing was a surprise and it was not as scandalous as what I was hoping. You may get a chance maybe one day when these ladies are older and they're really super influencers telling those gritty stories on their own social platforms. Mm-hmm. Would you? Chelsea, anything else you want to talk about before we close shop? I don't. I don't think so i don't know it's been a minute since i've been on here so i mean last time was around the super bowl with rihanna yeah and then i had a i don't even know if i made it on there but a short blip it for did <laughs> it women's did. day and then i had to leave because of a family emergency but yeah um let's see All right, what are your thoughts on i don't know if you saw this about of course, Kardashians are back in the news. Kim had a quote that's been taken and debated on both sides saying that the stuff that Kanye has done is going to do more damage to my kids than my sex tape ever will. What are your thoughts on that line? I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay. Wholeheartedly. I don't know. like Because what Kim did... It wasn't hurting anyone. And truly, with it being leaked without her permission, like, if that would have happened now, everyone would have been so mad on her behalf, not against her. Um, 
but uh, she has done nothing but say relatively polite things about Kanye. She has stayed silent on a lot of things for the sake of her children. And I don't know, all the stuff that he's done, I think is going to do more damage. Like, and not even just like stuff that he said about Kim, but stuff that he said about Jewish people, stuff that he's done to Taylor Swift, not like, I don't know. Like, I think it's going to do more damage to them looking at all of that than what Kim did in a sex tape that was 20 years ago that was leaked without her permission. Um, Speaking, continuing on that family, it looks like Chloe and Tristan had their baby son. I thought they already had him. Well, apparently they're revealing the name on the Kardashian premiere. This was a day ago. Oh, what's yeah. the name? Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, but you were right. They had the kid 10 months ago. His name is Tatum. So Tatum and True. That's kind of cute. The T theme. Which, but that's a whole other thing. Of like, okay. I mean, after all the stuff Tristan did against you and you have another kid with them still it's like eh. yeah it's kind of dumb but you win some you lose some uh, that's a big that's a big win some lose some i but, know it's it's wild so you brought up the stuff that like kanye did to like taylor and all this stuff but speaking of like taylor swift the drama uh, with Ailey, Matt- selena um go like what how did this all start kylie jenner like can it can it ever be reconciled that they just leave this alone or is it too far gone and for those who don't know just a quick synopsis on what happened between the four of them yeah i thought you were gonna go in the direction of maddie healy for Uh, a moment from 1975 but we can that can be another day Mm -hmm. um but the Selena, Haley, Kylie, Kendall drama mm-hmm. is so dumb. Like, Selena, I've never met her. I want to, though. I feel like she's the nicest person in the planet, um, mm-hmm. celebrity wise. And I think Haley just never let go of like the past and that the fact that selena and justin dated and why is it the girls beef like why is it not justin i don't know it's just dumb um justin's not even de- defending his wife in half of this too which is sad I, I would i've that. never heard his voice on any of this stuff no and that could be interpreted in many ways but one of them would be that he knows that he can't defend Haley and her actions um but essentially like Haley Bieber has been copying Selena um, and is just bullying her about everything with the help of Kendall and Kylie. Um, And it's a lot of it is wild. And it stems from a Dubai trip many years ago, too, Mm -hmm. where Selena had Kendall, Bella Hadid and Haley Bieber um, with her. And the theory is that so Haley could get close to Justin and talk to him and all this other stuff. And it's, it's wild. Do you ever think these people can be friends again? Because also when you get the fan bases, I saw something, I'm looking at this like timeline of like March 24th, 2023, Selena goes on like telling, you know, her fans not to send death threats because Haley Bieber reached out to her saying she was receiving death threats. And I, I, and I'm a, the fans are crazy. We all know that. But do you think these people can ever just let it go? Because then you have random, you have a Jordan Woods enter it at points. Like, like, can this ever be done? I don't think it will. Um, and, like, I think... Not the death threats or threats in general, but I think in terms of like the criticism, the general criticism, not the extremes. I think Haley is doing it to herself type of a deal by 
seemingly copying her um, and just having that general mean girl attitude about certain things because you can look up a bunch of clips of her copying Selena or making faces or comments um, and having her friends say mean things too. Um, So I think Haley's just, I think she needs to get more comfortable in her own skin and do some growing. Mm -hmm. But in terms of death threats and stuff, like that's ridiculous. No one should be threatened. It's not that deep. It's their lives, not yours. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think because of the fans that they're not going to ever really become friends. I just think it's wild because Selena is known as one of the most nicest people in this stuff. And she just gets hits left and right from just random celebrities like, oh, this is happening. Oh, the person who like the lung transplant. Oh, X O F Selena. Like, I'm like, what is she doing that's pissing these people off? Right. And everyone's commenting on the way she looks or mm-hmm. what she's doing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, she's battling lupus. She's on a lot of different medications, not only for that, but also for mental health. And medications mess with your body in different ways. And so I'm just over people commenting on other people's bodies. It's just dumb. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's going to be here for the test of time it's going to be here forever just people are going to do it forever and it's going to get more and more intense as beauty standards continue to just sway on a pendulum mm-hmm. so who knows with that anything else going on chelsea i know you already have you have some another episode plan that you would like to do down the road i do yeah, you talked about the Barbie movie. <laughs> yeah, I did. I forgot about that. Um, in July, the Barbie movie comes out. And I'm honestly super excited because we got a second trailer. And mm-hmm. it looks fantastic. And the soundtrack alone, I think, is going to be noteworthy. And then I we love can, a good soundtrack. We can also hear your thoughts on if it was all hype or all show. Because you are going to the Taylor Swift concert. Yeah, I am. Um, June 10th. Look out, Detroit. I'm so excited. So we can hear from you personally if it was worth the trip and the hype. I am so, so excited. And we can talk about Ticketmaster and the process of everything. They are are terrible. They are trash. They are terrible. That's all. Yep. They need to be addressed. But with that Ah. being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Thank you, Chelsea, for making the return talking about some bama rush uh make sure you check it out on max it's about an hour and 40 something minutes so it's not too not too long uh, i thought it sh- was too long <laughs> well you thought it was too long because you didn't like the director just interjecting every 20 minutes awful i don't think if the director was less you'd be like oh no this is perfectly right time length but probably <laughs> make sure you like rate <laughs> comment subscribe chelsea's got a lot of stuff to talk about throughout the Summer, some T Swift concert, some Barbie. There's going to be some other drama that comes out in the news. And just a quick thing rest in peace, Tina Turner, who just recently passed away, icon. But with that being said, L7C Podcast signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.